Hey everybody, you are tuned in to the Free Matt Podcast. It's free, it's Matt, okay? Let's move on. And it's on. a podcast. It's a podcast, true. Um, I am the one and only Matt Freemat, and the man to my celestial, celestial east, the star of the east, is the one and only General Patrick Flynn. Hey guys, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the weekend, otherwise known as BF 30 for a lot of people. True, true. Gospel. <laughs> I was like, Thank you for that. Gospel, gospel. You are um, welcome, sir. You are welcome. I am going to... Uh, in lieu of my usual, uh, my usual impression of a, of a fight entrance to the, the corner call, the corner calls. Right, the, right. I am going to tell all you folks that this world is an up, upheaval and that in this corner fighting, is it training? In <laughs> you messed up. Training in Las Vegas, Nevada, originally from the mean streets of San Pedro Sula. <laughs> General Patrick Flynn. Hey, hey. Oh, I just realized your head is buzzed and so is mine. This is the return of the Bald Bastards podcast. Bald Bastards. I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's been a while since we had a Bald Bastards podcast. Man, yeah. look at a solar panel. Look at that. I'm, th I'm thinking we should, like, maybe one day when I get enough balls, we should go get, get like, literally straight razor shaved heads <laughs> and have a Bald Bastards podcast. Thought about doing that, dude. <laughs> um, oh, Lord. Um, well, if y'all haven't figured it out, the Free Map Podcast, a libertarian round round table style discussion. We review articles. Uh, we go over current events. We throw in a mishmash of. Uh, I already said current events. Whatever we want, it's a mishmash of whatever we want. Sometimes cultural. It's, sometimes it's really informative. Sometimes it's a different point of view. Other times it's just our opinions and what we want to say about it in other words if we want to call it bullshit we will cultural pro potpourri uh, cultural appropriation too i i dig that one <laughs> next time i'm gonna wear like a mexican hat or something and y'all aren't gonna do a damn thing about it because it's cultural appropriation appropriate whatever feel like da -na -na -na, na -na 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 -na. <laughs> matt's wearing a big fucking hat <laughs> hey, how now, you I wanna go to, now I want to go to Tijuana's and harass Alma. That's funny. I was going to say the only person here uh, that's anywhere close to Mexican is not yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, I don't even know. Like, technically, like, I'm, technically, I'm more South than Mexican. I know. <laughs> you're more... You're like, you'd like piss off the Serenio. So like, you're really Serenio. You're like, <laughs> like, sir, like way down. Um, down where? Down there. Down there, way down there. <laughs> In the, uh, oh Lord. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm really flustered. <laughs> All right. Um, oh Lord, I'm, I'm, I've had a rough week. Um, a little bit just terrible sleep, weird, rainy conditions. Oh, I Just hear that. Generally pissed off. Couldn't, I was trying to go buy a hat and I failed twice. Um, the third time you will bring me and you will not fail. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can order one. I can order, order, yeah, I can order two. I could order one online and then probably pick it up. But, um, I went to the store and they didn't have those and I could probably order online and then, you know, pick it up. I hope, but yeah. 
what style of hat you going for? Uh, oh Lord, yeah. Bowler. <laughs> oh God. Cowboy. I like a cowboy hat, probably. Top top hat, low top hat. A top, top hat. It's, if I'm wearing a top hat, I'm gonna have a tight white button down shirt, and I'm gonna have uh, suspenders, and I'm gonna walk around like this. Well, I, I honestly think a short top hat you could pull off. If I could find one that's not felt or wool. Yeah. Um, Jamminleather.com. Mm, okay. I'll check it out. And I believe that hat has got an adjustable, adjustable band on the inside of it. Now, granted, it's leather, so I doubt it would be one you'd want to wear in the summer. And you know, late spring, but I think it would work for you. I'll check it out. Hey, I hope those folks enjoy their free publicity. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh Lord. Well, let me see. We'll uh, we'll get on with the rat killing. Um, oh, our articles today. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's either jamming leather or hot leathers. It's one of those two. Go for jamming. Anyway, well, continue JT, on with your article. JT Stockroom. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember somebody uh, somebody was talking some trash and and then they're like, "Oh, I'd, I'd like I'd like to buy something from a, a store like that." And I'm like, "Have you ever gone to JT Stockroom?" And they went to JT Stockroom and they slapped me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you, you're PG. I'm like, oh, man, this wonderful font of knowledge here. <laughs> I hear you. Oh, Lord. The first article coming up here, uh, it's from the libertarianrepublic.com. The title of the article in the most robotic way possible, Make the Third Amendment Great Again. And that is from Jack Stalker, which S-T-O-C-K-E-R which sounds like another John St. John. <laughs> True. Hail oh. to the king, baby. Living the American dream. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. Let, and for those that didn't know about the earlier conversation before we hit the record button, we were talking about video games, ended up on the original Duke Nukem, and I believe John St. John was the original voice for Duke Nukem. So there you go. Just to bring, just to bring, bring it on home for you. And if, we're, if I'm wrong, well, I'm wrong. So, I, oh Lord. Um, hold on, let me see. I am trying to get out of that, and it doesn't work. Act like it didn't happen. Um, trying to I'm screwing around, trying to pull up my uh, documents here. Oh, you know, yes. Once, once we get our programs and stuff fixed, the point where I'm going to be able to do this live and have Windows and all that garbage eventually. Um. Here is something awesome possum from the libertarianpublic.com. And I hate awesome possums. I hate awesome sauce too. But what? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of awesome sauce. Ah, uh, uh, you, you, you wound me, sir. You wound me. This this is like well, so so my dislike of awesome sauce is like like uh, to you is like me bad mouthing load. Ah, oh, okay. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it does. Shut up. <laughs> it, it does. It does. You mm, look it up. Look you it up. Stooge. You <laughs> stooge. <laughs> All right. It's a oh, back to the article here. You read that correctly. It says, make the Third Amendment great again. It's because you read that correctly. There is actually reason to bring up the Third Amendment of the United States Constitution and modern society. As Mayor Muriel Bowser, which is hilarious, of Washington, D.C., calls for the departure of all out-of-state National Guard troops in the nation's capital. And uh, let me see. It's a, da -da 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 -da. She had mentioned, the very first thing is we want the military. That's we want troops from out of state out of Washington, D.C., said Bowser at a recent press conference this past Thursday. 
Now, for you folks that haven't learned or got the reference while I was laughing, Bowser, I think, was it uh, Bowser from uh, Super Mario? Well, not just Super Mario, but the original Mario Brothers. He's, mm -hmm. Bowser has been the original bad guy for that franchise since the beginning. Yep. He always was after Toadstool, Princess <laughs> Toadstool. Kind of a low, low thing to run after. Like, my dream is, like, he learned to got pick up some game and found some other chick to run after. <laughs> She's like, why am I running? Like, uh, Princess Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> he traded Princess Toadstool for Zelda. Doodle -doodle -doodle. Oh, let me see. Uh, okay, she wants troops from out of state of, uh, out of the state of Washington, D.C. Out of state troops, yeah. And that's a recent press conference past Thursday. Yeah, it was a couple days ago. Tip, typically brought up in regard to the discussion of personal privacy, the Third Amendment forbids the quartering of military personnel in private homes and property without consent. In its time, the amendment was a critical example of laws which were designed with the exact purpose of limiting and controlling the actions of government. It has now taken a more representative meaning in the fight against state oversight. And let me see. Do, 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 do. Of course, it said, you know, there's some people have talked about the rele relevancy of this. Um, I will speak more just shortly. In Washington, D.C., as of Friday evening, under the direction of Defense Secretary Esper, the Pentagon has issued orders to disarm the Guard, National Guard. Additionally, the active duty troops called in by the Trump administration were given orders to return home. Um, the, one of the little trip ups with this, Washington DC is not a state. It's, it's technically a city. It has enough people living in it and they have limited representation in, uh, in Congress. And it's, it's weird because it could be their own country. Well, or their own state. And they're actually voting on it right now, but they have a limited way to fight. It's in the other room. It's a phone. They have a limited way to listen to their own voices in their head, but they have a limited way to deal with this. And they... I think if they become their own state, they will get their own National Guard troops, which might only be, you know, like 10. But, I, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Hey. Hold on, I'm going to mute you. Yeah, let's, I'm, gonna end up, I'm hopefully going to be able to. Uh, there we go. Um, anyway, the, uh, as I get flustered here. The whole thing is that they don't have, a, they fairly have any representation. And I know that the president and other people are approving of the you know, deployment of troops. It's not just breaking up protesters, but it's, you know, a continuity in government. It's a necessity to do so. I know a lot of people don't like do it. And they, the local government has been telling them, hey, this sucks. Don't do it. Get them out of here. Well, the local government has failed to deal with it themselves. So therefore, that happened. Well, it is true. I, I want to say that the Third Amendment, what they're saying now is, even though the federal government or other states have paid for the deployment and they're paying for the housing cost, that them being in the city and actually taking up space I'm talking about like standing there, not even doing their job, might mm -hmm. have might have an issue since they're deployed there about the Third Amendment, like they're being quartered in the city. I get what you're saying. It's it's technically property, and I think mm -hmm. that the city or you know the municipality or what you call it, DC, that they're saying that the people being around, they're taking up space and technically being quartered within the realm of the city and they're really not wanted, I guess. So 
it's not like they're there and like shaking people down. Uh, I've heard that they aren't. They're just hanging out at a hotel half the time, but people don't like them there. So, <laughs> well, it's they are a part of government, and most people don't like government. That's just a fact. It's also, I think, it's also it might be also illegal for them to stay at the the Trump Hotel in D.C. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Dead serious. I know. I know. We couldn't afford. Uh, to stay there when I was up there. And uh, I, I really had thought about asking if we couldn't get a special raid or something, but no, uh, mm -hmm. we couldn't get permission to stay there either because it's kind of expensive. So that would have been funny. Yeah. Next time I am, I might ask, I might call them and say, Hey, I'm a military veteran and we're staying in the area. I was like, I only have 95 bucks to pay a night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that part, but uh, it's only yeah, it's only the cheapest room is only four hundred bucks a night. Jeez, I, no, geez, that's nothing. I, uh, you, yeah, you scoff. <laughs> that's that's jump change. I could pull that out of my bathtub. You know, the, if the you could pull that out of your bathtub, then then why do you still live where you're at, and why have you not uh, upgraded your studio? Well, this is just my bunker. This is where I hide. <laughs> I actually live in a pyramid, a, a, a scale model of the uh, the the Great Pyramid of the, the was it Cheops, and I live in that thing. I think I think I have like a a full like two hundred foot like eddy, like the Egypt eddy looking one. Oh yeah. I, was that CD somewhere in time or something like that? Yeah, something like somewhere in time. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if it, I don't think it was somewhere in time actually, but but uh, don't. No, no, no. So, um, not seventh son of a seventh son. Um, not deja vu. Oh God, I gotta look it up now. Ha <laughs> ha! I made <sighs> made you do it. Made you do it. Oh Lord. Let me see. Uh, anyway, it, well, back to what I was saying, the, not only do I, I really wish I did live in, I really did wish I lived in something cool like the, not number of the beast, not peace of mind, somewhere in time, seventh sun. Um, no, it could have been, a, it could have been just the greatest hits album too. Was it power slave? Dun, 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 dun. Yep, it was Power Slave. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll have to, I'm gonna put a little picture of that in a reference. Might have to deface it or something and put, you know, Eddie lives and uh, ancient Egypt theme. Yep. The world. Okay. Sl it's the. It was called the World Slavery Tour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little ironic. So dope. <laughs> oh man, I felt like a little kid laughing. That's hilarious. Oh man, back back to the uh, rat killing here. Um, oh yeah, our other article is from actually I think it was John Stossel. What was the source of this? Yes, scene? it was actually John Stossel from uh, Reason, I think. Um, it had said JFS Productions, distributed by Creators. Uh, dot com and I will give them credit because I believe in giving people credit. John Stossel probably wouldn't kill me for using this on my podcast. He is more than welcome to come on here and tell me how cool I am, but I strongly doubt he is because he, he's per usually too busy being awesome. He's got a good mustache too. So, yeah, uh, I, but I got to admit, you know, I, I first knew the name Stossel from the infamous Dave Schultz slap. Got to admit it. Oh I'm yeah, a pro wrestling fan. God, but this I, is a but, while back. But what? But at the same time, I got to show some love to Stossel because he he's one of the few big name media personalities that actually tout and promote libertarian ideals and can you know and names and things like that of what of what that party's actually doing. You know, he I, I believe he's really open to actually having more. Than one than the two party system we currently have now. So I got to give give him credit, all the credit in the world for that. There's the fake wrestling, and he got the 
got a nice slab. Yeah. I was trying to think if they had one. I was trying to find a GIF, and I was going to put the GIF up. If you could find us a GIF, that'd be awesome. So, John Stossel GIF, and I put it in the background. Bet you didn't know uh -huh. you could put those in the background. Mm. You, can put, you can put little uh, GIFs and stuff in the background. Um, oh, Lord. Anyway. Um, oh, Lord, man, this is bad. Um, because it doesn't give me all the – yeah, it does here. Hold on. There's all sorts of options. But, um, oh, Lord, I did have a uh, – I did have an image. Oh, Forget Lord. about it, man. Forget about the papers and the rocks and the scissors. Let's get to the article. All right. Um, well, back to the rat killing about Stossel. Um, do, 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 do. Here it is. Here's one of them. Don't trust China. China asshole. Don't trust China. China asshole. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Here. That guy goes, don't trust China. China asshole. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Trump, don't trust China. China asshole. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's hilarious. Oh, anyway, back to John Stossel. John Stossel doesn't trust China either because China is asshole. Um, libertarian candidate enters the presidential race. Joe Jorgensen is running for the White House. Um, do, 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 do. Says, we have a choice. Next presidential election, we don't have to decide between two big spending candidates, neither of whom has expressed much interest in limited government. In limited government, I said, there's a third choice. This week, Joe Jorgensen, a psychology lecturer at Clemson University, won the Libertarian's presidential nomination. Of course, I'm going to say this, even though it wasn't highlighted. Okay, I won't delude myself. A Libertarian is unlikely to become president, but Jorgensen's platform is a refreshing change. She correctly, she correctly points out that government is too big, too bossy, too nosy, and way too intrusive. Of course, many candidates say that when running for office. President Donald Trump said it, but once he was elected, he increased spending by half a trillion dollars, created a new military branch designed to protect U.S. interests in space, the Space Force. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, there's no sex in space. Imposed, <gasps> yeah, imposed tariffs and demanded more funds for infrastructure and building a giant wall. Joe Biden wants to spend $532 billion more. Increasing spending on things like education, climate, and health care. By contrast, Jorgensen says government should do less and spend less. She noticed how big our bid notice how big how our you know that's even better. Our me fail English, how our big and cumbersome government slowed our response to the coronavirus. We had about 60 American companies making testing kits and the FDA only approved two she said in the final Libertarian Party debate. What the president should have done was use the Emergency Powers Act and said, FDA, you will have to only prove safety, not efficacy. Get these kits out there. If some kit tests don't work, the free market will weed that out, says Jorgensen. Thank you. If you are a large drug company, you don't want to put out a drug or testing kit that doesn't work, you'll go bankrupt. Yeah. Trump supported the latest multi-trillion dollar stimulus bill, saying it will deliver urgently needed relief to our nation's family and workers. Biden called for another stimulus, a hell of a lot bigger. Whatever. That's, that's crazy things that paranoid old men who run for president who don't get their words straight say. That's my Joe Biden impression. Does he ever get his words right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the people, the, the ones with the words, the other guys, the... <laughs> Do you want me to, I'll finish the article like, uh, you know, sleepy Joe Biden. Uh, Jorgensen, that uh, lady with the, uh, yeah, the, wouldn't sign either bill. 
the folks on the teleprompter let the people keep their money, she says. Uh, let them decide the uh, who should stay in business and who shouldn't. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's like Joe Biden speak. She points Take out. That, <laughs> <laughs> she points out that government is not as good as individuals as deciding where money should go. Hey, can I say this next part like uh, uh, Bill O'Reilly? With sure. Hard, with hard copy. Sure. I can't even read this. What does the heck does this say? Government money usually goes to their friends and special interests and lobbyists. This is, this is, this is, this is, it's all right here. We'll fucking do it live. <laughs> it's right here. Jorgensen with Sam Social Security while offering everyone an immediate opt out. Something like the Cato Institute 6.2% solution which will let individuals invest 6.2% of their payroll tax into a private retirement account. This freaking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While phasing the program out, she says seniors would be paid back what they put in. Thank you. That would be really nice. Sell those government assets, mineral rights, water rights, buildings downtown, she says. Give that money to seniors. Seniors in high school. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Finally, Jorgensen would end those needless wars that cause injuries or deaths of hundreds of thousands of American soldiers and the waste of trillions of tax dollars. She'd make America one giant Switzerland, armed and neutral, no American military personnel stationed in foreign countries. I'm actually fighting for that one, by the way, even though I liked some of the foreign countries, their bases, but... No foreign aid, no loan guarantees. This is not pacifism, she says. I'm proposing an American military force ready and able to defend the continental U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, and all U.S. territories against foreign attackers. Those were quotes. But like most libertarians, she doesn't want America involved in foreign wars. Yes, I've said that. Um, libertarian ideas are very different from those held by today's Democrats, Republicans. Instead of lusting, lust. Lust was um, Lords of Acid. They had an album called Lust. For more money and power, her party proposes a government that keeps the peace and mostly leaves people alone. Sounds good to me. Hell yeah. Now, got a question for you. Do mm -hmm. you think, a couple things actually. One, I don't know much about her, but so far from what I've read, I went on her site and checked out her bullet points that, it, you know, every candidate has. So far, I like her bullet points, but what do you think in terms of viability, do you think she was a good choice? Um, I think she would be some great cabinet member. I, on, I honestly don't feel like she would be a fantastic um i don't feel like she'd be a fantastic um uh, president or anything like that i think she's actually uh, a tremendous uh, uh like working in the system she she'd really help somebody else who's running well running big time running bigly well i mean i I kind of agree, but at the same time, I do like where she's coming from. I do think she she sounds more sane than any of the two candidates that are out there right now. Um, I really do feel like she's the only one out there that's truly for uh, any semblance of liberty, like personal liberty and things of that nature. I definitely feel like that. Um, I'm wondering, because we talked on the, on the show a while back that Thomas, not Thomas Massey, but uh, Justin Amash might be able to, to get in there, but I think he held off and, and waited for some reason. Do you think that cost him this nomination? Um, well, considering he pulled out, um, either he wrote, saw the writing on the wall or some of his, his, the insects, you know, a little buzzing in his ear, the little birdie yeah. told him that he probably didn't have a lot of friends in the Libertarian Party right now. And 
it kind of it kind of shows in a way there was a lot of other people that were making movements and it kind of differed it kind of differed big time you look at the people who were able to vote and made the rounds mm -hmm. and the way that they ran that there's a there's kind of a, a frame shift and i think sorry my apologies i think a lot of the people are starting to feel that the crossover candidates aren't the they don't have the zeal anymore and okay i think the whole waiting too long a lot of the other people had been there from day one mm -hmm. um e yes even very unpopular people like adam kokesh they were there from day one a lot of them you know well-meaning wonderful people and even the nut job ones like mcafee and a couple others Oh, what is that dude's name with the wizard hat? Vermin. Yeah. Vermin Supreme. Vermin, uh, I was surprised. And even though he has a very, a lot of people have a sore spot about him. They um, uh, actually had a really fairly decent turnout for a guy that a lot of people don't like. And hmm. yeah, I was like, that's like, weird. <laughs> yeah, I was, but the 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 thing against Justin Amash, um, not only the crossover voting thing. Um, Do you think the you know with everything that happened with Johnson and Well that that's left a bad taste in a lot of people people's mouths and they don't like the crossover candidates because of that? Um, it's it's an understatement. It's yeah, it's it's. I mean, it has a lot to do with it. Um, I think that the residuals from even like Bob Barr and a couple other people have slowly, it just kind of really like put a bad taste, exactly what you said, put a bad taste in their mouth. And that combined with some of the issues and a lot of the, the party plank stuff, there's no wiggling of like the party plank. I mean, the planks are pretty tough and what people keep, keep it's inviolate. And I don't think that, I think people would start to notice that these people, some of them are just liberal lights, like non, mm -hmm. not what I call non-spending liberals. Okay. And a lot of them aren't libertarians. They might be, they might be uh, subject matter experts and they might be politicians and bureaucrats, but they're not libertarians. And I think they understand that. And, and we, a lot of people have said this and a lot of them, feel that they want somebody who's been in the party within the party mm -hmm. and Joe Jorgensen fits the mold. Somebody's, you know, done their chops, worked to all sorts of little, uh, like treasurer and all sorts of stuff. She's worked within the party. She's done mm -hmm. a lot of it. And yeah, I said that, that kind of gets, you kind of get cred, you get street cred. That's like, Oh gee, you know, Except for she's yeah. not. <laughs> well, you know, but like I said, I still think overall, I think even though I've I've only been aware of her for probably a little bit over a few weeks now, I still like her platform better than the other two candidates combined. Um, I feel like she's the best chance we've got for getting any kind of our liberties back. I also feel that even though you you may not know her, if you're on the fence, give give her a shot because honestly, if you want things to be different and things to really change, well then you've got to do things differently and vote differently. Because if you don't, whether you go red or you go blue, we're still going to get the same old shit we've always had. I don't know about you, but I want some different shit. Yeah, and I I feel that way. I I think it's something that. I think people kind of they, they got burned out and like it, it, like anybody puts their energy into this they kind of feel like I guess they kind of feel like it's uh they feel like they got burned so whoa what the? do you see that oh I see that yes I see that uh oh here we go Dr. D. Wow. 
<laughs> we were, uh, he was in on it. Here's the thing. He was in on it. Uh, but the man, the man's Schultz. a purist. He was in on it. Schultz. Both of them were in on it. Oh, I, I know Schultz was. I don't know about Stossel, but I know Schultz was because Vince. Uh, from what I, what from what I know of the incident, Vince actually went up to him and said, "Hey, there's this interviewer. You da 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 da. Go be doc, Go be Doctor D." And I think that they. Here's the thing. I think that they put. Um, they they just like what's his face? It got uh, choked or whatever. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Was it Hulk? Uh, Hulk? That, Hulk Hogan that choked that guy? It's like, oh yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, to tell you the truth, go to YouTube. Go on Dark Side of the Ring, the Dave Schultz incident. It's actually they've got a, a special on it. It's about 45 minutes long. It's really good. Yeah, I think I've seen that. I won't pull it up, but yeah, uh, it's the whole thing is that. Um, yeah, I'm sorry guys. We had a segue. I finally found that. So <laughs> I don't know if he could like, I don't know if anybody out there could see that, but they could probably hear the audio if they didn't, but it's kind of cool having the, you know, slap. It, it, the, the whole thing is a lot of people don't know that there have been a lot of uh, non wrestling people involved in wrestling and they Donald done, Trump to say he's one of them. <laughs> Well, like in him tackling somebody, like, you know, he had tackled somebody and they, I mean, they basically had to rehearse it with him. And I mean, he's, he's not a spring chicken, but he tackled somebody and threw a couple like, you know, lame, like short stroke punches. And the thing is that you had like Pete Rose, Pete Rose got, um, what he got pile driver? He got body slammed or something. By Kane. Yeah. And it was good. I was like, heck, he's he's sixty. He said he was in his sixties or seventies. I was like, good God! I said that's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. I said, believe me, he probably felt it for a couple months, but Kane, you know, was a professional, so he's probably in probably pretty good hands. So yeah, he probably, he probably took he took care of him the best he could for sure. I you know I don't I don't think Kane did anything with any non non scripted malice let's put it that way or non choreographed malice might be a better way to put it well and and i always tell people that you, you what you see the whole you know there's a a choreograph it, it you know he's a choreograph uh, it's not even a good dance it's a it's a framework and they have you know the shots and all that stuff and they have parameter slow it keep it you know, steady. I use mm-hmm. the term script. It's more like how you shoot it, like the, 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 the you know, the footage. And to tell folks, it's more like a, uh, it's a poorly controlled movie where you have parameters mm-hmm. and you have things you can and cannot do. There's things you want, the things you don't get. And things you can ad lib every now and then, or at least the way you used to be able to, you could ad lib and, you know, as times go, go has went on, it's gotten less and less about that. And, and, and there's been, uh, and that's resulted in, I feel like that's resulted in a poor, poorer quality and of a product. And it's just less creative freedom, but that's just me, but I've been a lifelong pro wrestling fan. So. Well, I mentioned about like the, the creative team when they don't put, they put, it's not demands, but they put what, you know, like, and everybody agrees, the creative team and the, you know, the jam sessions, and they put it together, and they have, like, what I call, like, the bullet point list of what they need and what they want, and it doesn't yeah. have a lot of wiggle room, yeah. and the only wiggle room is basically if they have to, if something really screws up and they have to, like, basically fill in some blanks and, like, yeah. something got really hurt and you can't pull major moves, and you're like, I can't shoot this garbage. And you're like, I'm over there, like, stomping on the guy's foot two or three times in a row and giving the ref a wink and trying to, like, tip him off at, hey, we're going to – and they end up having to close the showdown, like, having a you, – you thought they were going to do, like, two or three really cool moves. And yeah, I had, mean – They had the script in front of the guys. And uh, what's his face? Uh, they had the script in front of them. And you could tell he was like, they had to go to the alternate script because 
the one guy's injured, and he goes, oh, he looks like he's injured. Well, that and also, I mean, think about um, Diamond Dallas Page and Eddie Guerrero. Diamond Dallas Page um, was in a match with Eddie Guerrero, and Eddie Guerrero had done a move. I can't remember if it was like the frog splash or just a move off the top rope. He got hurt, and they had to do the diamond cutter finish DDP was not supposed to win that match, but because Eddie Guerrero got injured, they ended the match really quick with the diamond cutter, and that way they they, they could get back to the uh, uh, doctors and stuff. And that's I believe that led to DDP's actually first uh, WCW title run was literally by accident. And I guess they rolled with it. Like the writers were like, we can't save it for now. It could be a couple months from now before we get a chance, you know, healing up and get a chance. We call that a, a, a chance to roll away from the push from that side stream. And I know people are like, oh, that's fake wrestling stuff. And I was like, you'd be surprised how many times that somebody's gotten a title shot and they know that they weren't going to be able to sell T-shirts. Like, that's they're like, pay-per-views are going to suck. I'm like, but we have to give this guy a title shot. <laughs> Like, is anybody healthy? Is anybody who, you know, like, is anybody who's healthy enough? Can they can they go and jump in the ring? And like, no, it's like, yeah, you got two or three guys that can make the the mid card who can make like uh like the you know, SummerSlam event, the hell in a cell type stuff. Got a handful of those guys. Yeah. The bad thing well, I mean dead serious, it's the bad thing is that a lot of them don't. Uh, you'd be surprised how many injuries. It's it's kind of like I told you in the oh, fights yeah. world. Like they're like, we they have to have a pay per view in those set amount of times. These set these set events, and there's times that yeah you'll you have two or three guys they know that could be the main event, and they're like no, the guys end up hurt, something happens, contract issues, whatever, and they're like we have a nobody going up for a title shot. Stupid. Man, we got off on a he- one heck of a tangent there, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Anyway, guys, that was the end of the article. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But seriously, uh, to just, just to kind of bring it home on the key points of what we, were t- what we were talking about, and we're not trying to tell you who to vote for or, or whatever else because that's just not what we do. But we do kind of feel like, hey, there is a third option here. And if you, if you really are tired of the red and the blue and you really want some kind of change, then vote for her. If for nothing else, you give an opportunity for another party to actually be in the race, you give us more options later on down the line. Because honestly, this red and the blue, one and two, it's got to stop. Uh, because that's, to, to me, that's like 65% of the problem right there. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. I have a gun in my hand. I'm going to tell you, General Patrick Flynn is the unofficial ruler of the chop now, and you will vote right him in. You will put his name on it. You get that? This is real. I'm talking to you people. This is not a joke. If the you know chop. What's good, if you know what's good for you, you will. You will do what I say because – we don't believe in democracy. We're throwing people out of helicopters. You will do what we say. You know <laughs> With the Star for. Wars scream as they go down. <laughs> ah! I didn't vote for Patrick Flynn. Ah! <laughs> just anyway, that's over in Seattle. I was just like, eh, you numbskulls. Yeah, that's a whole nother bag of dicks right there. Oh, I know. I, and yeah, this I knew this was uh yeah, that's unloaded. Thank God. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. I'm going to walk around with a loaded gun. Or would I? I know you. I know the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this, man? <laughs> Smocky. You know this, man? Yep. Anyway, folks, uh, we'll, we'll tell in there. We'll ray off the, way off the rails here. Ray off the whales, too. It's way off the whales. But anyway, uh, any parting words, uh, General Patrick Flynn? 
No, I mean, I, I kind of – I probably should have saved that last spill for the parting words because, you know, red and the blue, one and two, 64% of the problem, in my opinion, maybe more. I feel like we need more options. But in order to get more options, we need at least one more option. And we got to make that one option viable, in my opinion. Um, I know I always say it's better to, to vote for a candidate than a party. But honestly, the more – things go on and the, the way things get I'm more like you know what let's at least get this third party option going and then branch off to where we need to be after that but let's at least get something else generating yeah that's well put uh, before we part I want to make sure you guys know usually try to put the articles on links also I was going to put uh, our uh, email if you want to send hate mail via email Please send hate mail. We love to hate because we know we're doing something right when we get hate mail. Freemattpodcast at gmail.com. That's F-R-E-E-M-A-T-T-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. Also Twitter at Podcast. Also, I'm on Gab. I think I believe in the same thing. Um, let me see. I already mentioned Twitter. I said, yeah. Um, Hey, thank you for stopping by. I hope I hope you are doing well, and I hope you continue to do well. And I'll leave it up to Joe Patrick Fun. Hello. Thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. We hate you. We love you. We hate you. Bye, bitches. <laughs>